Hi everyone, this is a really quick tutorial video that has been requested since I posted this work in progress photo on my social media and it's the front, uh, not the front cover, but the inside cover page of the Small Victories colouring book. So it's the first page in the book and it does have a, a circle with the writing inside, but I decided to create a colour wheel kind of effect and a lot of people have asked if I can show the colours that I used and how I blended them and things like that. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. You may have noticed we are on a different surface here. <laughs> I am in front of the fire currently because it is absolutely freezing. It is minus one here and um, I just, I'm too cold to go and sit at the desk. <laughs> so we're going to call this colouring on the carpet with Claire. We've had colouring on the couch with Claire. Um, this is colouring on the carpet. So welcome to my carpet. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to get started really quickly. So this is what we're hoping to achieve. I'm going to do it on a smaller scale, but with all of the same colours that I used. And um, yeah, so it's going to be really quick, really easy. It's basically just blends, um, which I guess pretty much everyone knows how to do. But let me just put a, something underneath this so I can lean on it. But yeah, so it's just blends really. Um, I have drawn a circle in the back of the book and I have put a cross in the circle. So we've got a line across here and then a line across the bottom. And then we've done another line and another line and it makes eight sections. I'm so bad at explaining things, but basically draw a cross in the middle of a circle and then draw another cross diagonally and you will get eight segments of the circle. So I'm sorry about the angle. This isn't my usual standard of um, framing, <laughs> but we are, we are doing what we're doing because it's freezing cold. So I've done this quick circle and I'm gonna get straight in with the blends. We're gonna have red, orange, yellow, green, um, green, blue, blue, purple, and red, violet. So those are the eight sort of colors that I chose on mine and we are using Arteza pencils so a couple of people have been quite um, surprised by me using the Arteza pencils in this book I think it's because they're not a pencil that I frequently grab um, but they work brilliantly on this paper I think they're a kind of sort of budget pencil I wouldn't say they're a really low budget pencil but they're a budget-ish pencil a non-artist pencil um, that needs to be used on the right paper for them otherwise they're not going to perform as strongly as they they could so they work really well on this paper so if you've got this book or any of Johanna Basford's recent books grab your art teasers and give them a second chance on this paper right we're going to start with red first so here are the colors that I've chosen for the red segment we've got pink macaroon rose red and carmine red so that's dark medium and light I'm going to make sure that they are sharpened. So I've just got a quick, quick little cheap sharpener here. There's nothing fancy when you're coloring on the carpet with Claire. <laughs> I am lying on my front, on the rug, in front of the fire. And yeah, that's what you, that's, that, this is the kind of winter format that, <laughs> that we're going for now. Right, so I'm gonna start on this um, segment. It doesn't matter which segment you start on. And I'm gonna be going from dark to light um, on the outside to the lightest in the inner corner. So starting with the carmine red, yep, that is the darker one. Um, it really is just a case of blending as you normally would with pencils. So I'm just putting a bit of a, a bit of an edge on the circle there so that we don't go over the lines. And then light pressure sort of light medium pressure but they are really quite pigmented these pencils and like I say this paper is like the perfect quality for these pencils so all I'm doing is a gradient making my pressure heavier at the top here and then steadily lifting the pencil using less pressure as we get towards towards the, the towards the middle of the segment I would say um, because we are going to overlap the middle of this bit of red with the next colour and then that will go to about here and then we'll overlap that with the final colour. So I'm just putting an initial blend down first. Initial layer rather. 
And then we move to the next colour, which is the Rose Red A001. And as I said, we go from sort of the midpoint of the previous colour. And we go completely over that. And hopefully that will give us a nice seamless blend. I apologise if you can hear my dog in the background. She is... She makes noises like a guinea pig. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong. I think we had a defective dog. <laughs> but um, yeah, she's uh, she's constantly making noise of some sort. Just these little tiny snuffly squeaky noises. Um, this is pink macaroon. And again, just going over the midpoint of the last colour. And then straight into the centre. Now, some of these lighter shades are really quite light when you compare them. So for example, if you put these two together, you know, there is a big difference there. That just means that you need to be a little bit more, um, a little bit more cautious in your blending, as in don't do too much of a harsh line here because you are gonna need to do some really, really light little bits of layering to get them to blend better. <laughs> If that makes sense back in with the carmine red i can go in now and do a much heavier layer of pigment so almost burnishing the paper at this point and then again as you come down to the center of the segment you will need to lift the pencil from the paper a little bit, make your pressure lighter so that there's still white speckles here, um, to, which is the tooth of the paper and that is gonna grab the pigment of the next color and make that blend. So you can have it really heavy and solid at the top. Oh, gone out of the line, doesn't matter. I think there's red violet next to that one, so you shouldn't really be able to see it. And then you move on to your rose red and do the same thing. So from halfway into the carmine red, you then use heavy pressure to blend. And you shouldn't be able to see a seam in those colours. But as the pink macaroon is really, really light, we just want to be a little bit more careful when it comes to how light we're using or how heavy that we're using the pencil and then the pink macaroon should blend quite nicely now some of these segments the colors that i've chosen the lightest colour isn't really very light. Um, it's sort of the lightest that I could find within this pencil case of spare artisans that I am using. <laughs> so what I've done on some of the other segments where those light colours are still quite deep is to just layer a bit of white over the top. Now you can use the white Arteza, but it's, you know, they're fairly hard pencils and it's not a great white. So I would say if you can, use a Prismacolor Premier White to um, just lighten up that bit in the center. You don't need to do it with the pink macaroon because that is still, that is really light to start with. But things like, um, let me see, what do I have? So uh, let's go for the, um, the teal kind of colors. You can see that this light one is really still quite a bold, vibrant, deep color. And that is not going to ever be as light and as pale as the pink macaroon. So we need the white to layer on top of that one. <clears throat> so that's the pink segment done. Hopefully it's showing up okay on this angle. I'm so not used to, to colouring like this. <laughs> I mean, I am, you know, on my own, but it's so strange to be doing it on video. Anywho, let's move on to the next segment. So really all you need to know at this point are the colours that I've chosen. Um, because it's the same technique all the way through. So we've got Blood Orange, um, which is A073, Orange A003, Pumpkin A052, and Marmalade A010. 
So they are all the pencils that we're using in the orange section. Starting again, dark to light. It's up to you what your preference is, if you do dark to light or not. Um, I always do. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing all the way around. I'm going to try and speed this up a little bit because it is the same technique. So you're not missing out on anything. And once you've done a few segments, you might even be brave enough to do all of the heavy burnish blending right from the first layer rather than having to put down that initial placement layer. So I'm going to do that now. Now this blend has four colours, whereas the previous one had three. So you do need to gauge how much of each colour to put down, sort of how far into the segment it goes. So as you can see, I've done a burnish blend at the top and left that bit of light pigment ready for the orange to blend into. It's a good idea as well to change your directions. As you can see, when I did the first colour, I was colouring this way across. Now I'm going to colour vertically and that can just help sometimes to eliminate any lines when you're trying to do a seamless blend. But these colours are pretty close together anyway. This is a, a, quite a good quad of colours to blend into each other. So you shouldn't have too many problems. But I just wanted to do this video. I was It was requested and I also wanted to kind of prove that it is the Arteza pencils that I'm using. Because I think, as I said earlier, a lot of people are quite surprised that those pencils can give this kind of level of vibrancy and smoothness and blending ability as well. I've got nothing against the Arteza pencils. It's just that like most pencils, they, they only play nicely with certain paper surfaces. I mean, Prismacolors you can get away with on pretty much any paper. Sorry, that was um, pumpkin and I'm now moving on to marmalade. Yeah, with Prismas you can get away with a lot um, on most kinds of paper, but certain pencils require a different texture, a different surface to perform at their best. And I think Arteza is one of those. So that was a complete burnish blend all in one layer. It was just a heavy layer. You can see hopefully how smooth that is. I'll just put the little bit of pink macaroon down here. And then we move on to our next combo which is the, the yellow combo. So for that, I have Tuscan Sun A040, Sunflower A016, and Lemon A004. Starting again with the deepest colour, which is the Tuscan Sun. I'm just going to turn you around a little bit. And again, I am doing this really quickly for demonstration purposes. You might want to take your time, um, but with the one last night, I'm going to say that that took, I think it was one and a half episodes of The Crown. So what's that, like an hour and a half? Obviously, that was a bigger surface area to colour. Um, then we've got Sunflower. So if this is the first video from my channel that you are watching, if you're brand new here, this isn't the usual standard of filming. Uh, I just want to make that clear because I normally have a desk and, you know, a top down setup and lights and things like that. But I am on my living room floor, lying on my belly, making this video. My iPad's kind of propped up. It's got a sharpener underneath it, holding it up. And it is not professional in the least. It's just a really quick, quick snapshot of how I achieved the colour wheel. So again, it's totally up to you how long you take on this. 
just to make the blends more seamless. I'm doing it super, super quickly so I can see some some places where the blend isn't exactly perfect, but I think you get the gist, hopefully. So that would be the yellow segment. Next up is the green. We've got four colours for the green. We have got, let me get these in order. Okay, we've got Basil A093, Mint A030, Spring Green A042, and Lime A101. So here we go with the Basil. Again, this is another four colour blend. So we're just making sure by eye that we've got enough room for each colour to have a kind of equal place on the segment. Then we've got mint. Now I believe that the pencils that I'm using are from the 72 set. I'm not going to say that that's guaranteed because I've had them in a pencil case as a, a spare set. And I can't remember if they're the 120 or the 72, but I'm pretty sure they are the 72. And the 120s that I've got are in a, a different pencil case. So if you've got the 72, you should have these colours. But don't come after me if you haven't. <laughs> just it's just an educated guess at this point right so we've got i'm just going to put a little bit more of the basil very very lightly over the transitions point where it meets that mint that's what you can do if you feel like the blend isn't as nice as you want it to be just hoping that i've got the right angle here for you then we have spring green Finally, lime. So again, if there are any transition areas that you see that you think are a little bit not very blended, not very seamless, you can just very lightly go over it with the previous colour. So I've got the darkest one, Basil, and I'm very, very lightly adding touches of it here and there to try and make it a little bit more of a smooth blend. There we go. So again, this is very quick, just demonstrative, but if you take your time, it will look a lot better. Uh, next up is the teal colours, so the blue-greens. And for this one, we have Ocean Blue A089, Shamrock Green A066, and Turquoise A017. Starting off with the Ocean Blue. I've got a Christmas present under here. That's what's keeping it. The page um, upright so that I can lean on something because it's the very back of the book. I'm just going to be quite quick about this. The annoying thing about this pencil, I noticed it last night, is it's got a little bit of a, a darker bit of pigment running through it and it kind of created this, I don't know whether you can see it, it's like a, a dark streak. I hate it when that happens. You, especially when you're trying to create something that's super smooth and blendy and then you've got this dark streak of pigment coming through. It's really annoying. But I mean, you even find that with the most expensive of pencils like i've got luminance that do do that sometimes and they're like the creme de la creme pencils so it's not just an art easy thing i suppose it's more likely to happen in cheaper pencils but then again is it i don't know then we go to shamrock green 
Now, if I was using the 120 set, there would probably be a bit of a better trio blend than the one I'm using today. But I've got this spare pencil case set out because I was staying at a family member's house um, recently and I wanted to take some colouring materials with me and I just thought I'm not going to take a big huge suitcase of pencils so I just grabbed these Artezas and that is why that is why I'm using them really it was just the first thing that I grabbed and I'm really glad that I did because I've rediscovered these pencils now remember I said that this one was really not as light as the other light ones in the colour wheel so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a really light layer of this colour the turquoise And then once that's kind of where I want a base layer to be, that's when I'm going to bring in that white Prismacolor. And that will both blend and lighten that central colour so that it better matches the, the tone of all the central colours. And I think I'm just going to do a little bit on this green as well. Just where the line meets the next colour because it was a little bit imperfect and then you'll get like a a really light really light blue at the centre and the prisma colour is much better than the Arteza white so it's much more opaque so again very very quick but there is the blend next we have the blue blend which is Indigo A007, Peacock Blue A008 and Robin Egg Blue A044. I'm going to grab the Indigo, turn you around a little bit. Can you hear Rosie? She's snoring, but she squeaks and she huffs and I don't know if Yorkies do that in general or whether it's just rosy. It's just a rosy thing. So this is another three colour blend. Go then peacock It's so funny, Rosie's actually lying on the bottom of my back. <laughs> like she's got all the room in the world to go and make herself a bed or just lie wherever she wants, but she has to be touching me all the time. I love that about little lap dogs. They, they really do want to be touching you. <laughs> Next, we've got the Robin Egg Blue. Again, not really a very pale colour. So we will do a light sprinkling of it in the centre and then come back over with the white. Now this isn't a perfectly segmented circle, I did it freehand. I mean, I used a template for the circle, but I did the crosses freehand so they're not going to be equal segments i don't even think the one that i did on the, the front page is an equal one because that was freehand as well uh, so just adding a little bit more of the robin egg blue very very lightly over the top so that we've got a bit of a better blend there we go Second to last segment is the purples. So we are using Amethyst A088, Lavender A109 
and Lilac A062. So we'll start off with the Amethyst. I'm going to turn this back around and do it from the top. I'm just making sure that was the right colour. So again, a bit deeper of a colour, so we're going to do a light layer right in the centre and blend it with the white. making sure this wipe's kind of clean because you can get some transference of the previous colour if you're if you don't make sure that it's clean first okay so there's the purple blend and finally we've got the red violets which are eggplant a086 and Fuchsia A014. Starting with the eggplant. And because this is just two colours, you can go quite far into the segment. Before you pick up the Fuchsia. And again, do the white thingy for the centre. Rosie's so loud. I have asked the vet about this, by the way. It's not like she's got some scary underlying condition that I don't know about. Um, he just said it's just some dogs are like that, just more vocal and... The breathing is more apparent. Uh, white. Okay, there we are. So that is pretty much what I did last night on a faster, a very much faster. Um, scale but there you go you can see all of the different colour blends on there and then I did kind of make it look a little bit like a candy by adding some shadows and highlights just up in the top and the bottom um, corners of the circle and I did that by grabbing hold of the white prism colour and in the top let me just figure out where I am in the top bit so where the red violet meets the red meets the orange I would just do a little bit of a curve like this and the Prismacolor white is fantastic because it's so opaque that it will go over these colours and create this solid but still kind of blurry white area. Again this is super quick, not perfect but you end up with something like that and you can very lightly use pressure at the edges of it to make it even fuzzier so it's not quite a harsh line and then i used the charcoal pencil which is a120 in the opposite corner where the blue meets the blue green meets the green and did 
the same thing. So just a little bit away from the actual edge. And try not to make it too harsh. So using light pressure. And then I think I even used a bit of this charcoal next to the white highlight but on the very edge right up on the very edge of the circle and just make sure it's kind of blendy blendy and hazy you don't want it to be a complete solid dark line and I think doing that just gives it that that look of roundedness and then on the side that I used the charcoal on I did the same thing with the white so grabbing that white back and then just putting a little bit of white right up against the edge and that kind of creates I mean this circle's totally gone skew if now but it kind of creates that look of it being rounded and 3D and that is that is it so <laughs> that what you see there is how I created this one at the top exactly the same you can see that little bit of um, charcoal that I put here and the little bit of white that I put here and there you go so I really hope you've enjoyed this I know it's been a bit unusual and not our standard sort of setup but I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon on Colour with Claire